Ah. Coming your way, Simon. Yeah. To do this story justice, we're gonna have to go back to the beginning. So we're out here a couple days before the season, just kind of getting the birds tuned up, letting them run a bit, working on some steadiness, and then I've got. Freddy out here who's just figuring it out, so letting him go chase after birds and just be a puppy and have fun. This is his first time, first season, first time on the prairie, six months. So Amos over here, he's two and a half and, and just trying to keep him steady and, and knock the rust off a little bit. So it's been a hot summer. It should be a, a good time. We're gonna run a little bit more uh, tomorrow and then season starts and we're after him. It begins. Good boy, Amos. We spent the rest of that afternoon and the next day doing just that giving the dogs as many opportunities as we could to knock some rust off and get in front of wild birds. And then covered some ground with tires and feet, scouting around and making plans for the opener in the days to follow. Before sun crested the sky on that much awaited opening morning, Ben, Simon, Bubba, myself, and most importantly, the dogs were ready. It's here, opening day. Got just an absolutely beautiful morning right here. I'm super fired up. You can probably hear the chorus here. The dogs are, they're excited. Um, we've got the spot that we, we scouted last night. And, um, it's a great little spot, lots of, lots of food. We'll see choke cherries, we'll see buffalo berries, rose hips, and you also see like this micro train. Um, whether, you know, if you're hunting Sharpies, the big flat monoculture grass, not the best, but you'll see in here, it's just beautiful habitat. So we're gonna get uh, get everything ready to go, send the dogs and hope we find some birds here. We were less than 100 yards into our first walk of the morning before we were notified that both Ben's dog, Amos, and Simon's dog, June, had gone on point. Huh? Pheasant, 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 pheasant. Good girl, whoa. Oh. <laughs> uh. Amos is on point over here, but the thing is, there's a lot of young of the year pheasants. And if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be really tough to distinguish between them. So, oh, I got my heart going though. Oh. right in front of you. We pressed onward, no, but we didn't make it very far before Amos went on point again. Oh yeah, there's something here. Coming your way, Simon. Pheasants. Good job, Amos. Good job. Go, go. A lot of pheasants. We just gotta, once we get, it seems like in this brushier, thicker stuff, there's gonna be a lot, lot of more pheasants, but the thing is here is they haven't grazed this in a while. Mm -hmm. When hunting a prairie like this, ah. grazing is a huge factor in the type of cover that you end up with. In this situation, where we were had not been grazed in quite a while, which resulted in thicker cover. Oh which is favorable for pheasants, but it's not so favorable for sharp-tailed grouse. So we did a quick scan on the map to locate an area that appeared to be more favorable and then pointed our feet and dogs in that direction. It didn't take long before we saw results. Easy. Yep. First bird of the year. There we go, that's what we're after right there. Well, sharp-tailed grouse looks like a young of the, young of the year bird. How oh, they're just crazy, they're cool birds. Get those feather legs, they're just so well adapted to living up here in the winter, so. Let's keep moving, that is awesome. Gotta get the monkey off our back. Open day. Heck yeah. <laughs> Ah, love it. Do it again. With a much better understanding of where these Sharpies were likely to be, success started finding us much more frequently. Good work, my friend. Oh, wow. Nice. Good job, Junie. That was awesome. Cool. That was really good. That made me happy. Yeah. 
So the one thing that's interesting about this is like Sharpie's like about knee high grass. It's kind of thick. So when you're walking, you're tripping and it doesn't look like this pasture has been burned or grazed for probably, I don't know, I'd say four or five years even. It's starting to get a little thick, um, but obviously there's still birds in here. So we're going to keep Mr. on keeping on. Job, probably head back to the truck, hunt our way back, grab some new dogs and come back out again, just so we can, we've got the dog power. We don't want to burn them up in this heat so good work Simon although we were on our way back to the truck both June and Amos got birdie and eventually went on point before we could make it there oh dang it I shut open my gun Whoa. Whoop. Okay. Oh, good yeah, work, Junie. You got, you beat me to it, you dirty dog. Woo. The 28 gauge is lighter, you know? Yeah. Comes <laughs> up quick. Uh, oh, there we go. Where's the other one? I don't know, it's Juniper had it. Good Thank job, Junie. <laughs> Oh man! Let's find the other one. That that's a little bird you can definitely tell. That was a nice covey though, heck yeah. It is hot though. The dogs are hot. It's gonna be a warm day today, but so we're gonna try to get our birds early, but man, that is fun. Now that Amos and June had fully earned their break. We made it back to the truck, yeah. gave them some water, a nice bed to lay on, and switched them out for a couple of fresh dogs. You got old Rip here. This is a buddy of mine, George Lyle's dog. He's a two-year-old pointer. He's a, he's a dang good dog for two years old right now. So we're gonna see if we can't get him into a few birds. Right, Ripper? We turned Rip loose along with Ben's Drothar, Herb, and it didn't take long before Rip threw a point. Good job, Rip. What can I say? You can't hit all of them. Fortunately, we didn't go too much further before Rip went on point again, just on the other side of this clump of oh, cover. Everyone goes. Get up. Nice shot, Simon. Thank you, sir. Good job, Rip. Good work, my friend. Thank you. Heck yeah. Good job, Rip. That was Simon's fourth sharp tail of the day, meaning he had reached his limit. Needless to say, we had had a very eventful opening morning. And with the heat of the day setting in, it was time to head back for the sake of the dogs. Well, that's opening day right there. It was uh, you know, off to a little bit slower start, but then we got into them. And uh, you just uh, hunting early season Sharpies is so much dang fun. and. So we got our birds and then actually we, we took, Simon and I took the cameras over and Lake and Bubba got to shoot. Bubba got his first bird on his first shot. Uh, so that was super cool. And uh, yeah, it got to be, I think it's probably about 80 degrees. It's 9.45 in the morning. So we're gonna load the dogs up. Uh, we're gonna actually head back, go to camp, clean the birds. And until then, hell of an opening morning. Starting out on the second morning, we went to a completely new spot with very different habitat than the opening morning. But we stuck with the two veteran dogs, Amos and June. They seemed completely re-energized, so we turned them loose with high hopes. We didn't get into birds quite as quickly as we did on the opener, but we only made it a couple hundred yards before Amos and June both went on point. And just like that, we were on the board. So one of the hardest things uh, about finding spots, whether it's we're hunting sharp-tailed grouse, pheasants, or whatever, is, is being able to translate what you see on the landscape out here to how it looks on aerial maps. So um, one thing I do a lot is when I'm even driving around, especially in a new area, I'll flip on CarPlay so I can see 
what it see what the aerial imagery looks like and i can also be looking out the window so i could drive by a spot and be like whoa that looks good i can also look on aerial imagery and see what that looks like from the top down i'll go ahead and mark that spot so then when you're out east coding whether it's on the web map or on the app you can easily see what good habitat looks like this is a perfect example of how i found the spot i was driving around like, whoa that looks good was able to translate it through a waypoint and it paid off after that last small cubby find we turned the dogs back loose and started covering ground again back on the search for more grouse yeah, I want to go up here and then we'll cut back into the rest. The problem was, we weren't really finding it. We had all but given up on this spot before Amos slammed into a point. I got two. Good find, heck yeah. Whoa! Whoa. Heck yeah, good All job. Right, oh. Amos Mose. That was a good find, bud. I think we got another. A uh, heck of a nice big bird. That was a heck of a find, heck of a ride. So, uh, interesting enough, we're on, still on state land here, but there was a fence and. Um, I didn't exactly know what was in there. I flipped up recent imagery and I could see that it was the, there was a definitely a distinct line where that fence was. And that was a lot greener. This was a lot tanner, that more interspersed, but with, with grass, buffalo berries, all that kind of stuff. So we started over there, but quickly transitioned over to this side um, just because we knew that this was better grass than that, but that was our access point. So we made a quick loop through there and came right to the good stuff. And obviously it, uh, it uh, produced. So recent imagery, that was awesome. That, uh, that really helped us there. Being fully satisfied with our success from the morning, we decided to start making our way back to the truck. However, June decided to show that she had a few more bird finds up her sleeve before we made it there. The first came in the form of this bonus good cubby job. of hunts. Good job, Juni. What did I say? Let's go shoot some hands. You did. Or did that go just across the fence, I think. And then about 200 yards later, she went on point again. Another pheasant. Whoa! Yeah, I did. Dead bird! Here. Here. Good girl. Gif, gif, good job, good girl, good job. That was a good point. Now with our vest full of birds, it was time to get back to the truck, get the dog some rest, and get ready for our third and final day of hunting. Man, it is an absolutely gorgeous morning. Temperatures have dropped a little bit. I think we're in the, finally in the 50s. Um, we're at an app, just a gorgeous spot right here. Big rolling hills. Uh, should be sharpies, maybe a cubby or two of huns, but it's just a really cool spot. And what you're really looking for, and um, what I've, you know, a lot of people, when they've they've come up here and, and hunted, they, they're like, man, I, I'm finding a ton of pheasants, but I'm not finding much for sharpies or huns. And then what you figure out is a lot of them are hunting these bottoms right here. The darker area in the bottom is denoting thicker grass. So darker the area, thicker the grass, lighter the thinner. So you see up here, and these are hillsides. On either side, this is the bottom. There's like this, for example, is a patch of buffalo berry or snowberry. You've got some plum thickets scattered throughout here. So that's where they're going to be. So if you're running into pheasants where you're looking for sharpies and huns, uh, you're probably in too thick of grass. So, yeah, we're gonna do it now. With high hopes for the possibilities this day three of hunting could hold, we began getting suited up for the morning. The biggest difference about this morning in particular is that the young puppy, Fred, was going to get his first chance to hunt. 
But, of course, we're also bringing Rip and June to have some seasoned dogs out there as well. June. We started covering ground immediately. Admittedly, some of us a lot more than others. However, it wasn't until late into the morning that we finally caught up with some birds. Rip is on point right up over this choke cherry tree here, right behind it. So a big mistake that a lot of people make when they're shooting grouse, case in point, I did it right there. First bird gets up, two, three, four birds get up, a little bit outside of range. A lot of people will dump two shells into them and then five, six will come up right dang near at your feet. So in that situation, try to just, it's hard to exert some patience because a lot of the times those birds are going to pop corn flush right out in front of you. So, but there were enough we were able to, knock a few birds down, so that was fun. Let's go find them now. Good boy. Oh, nice. Good job, Rip. Good boy, Freddy. Come here, bud. Good boy. Let's go find him, nice. All right. So, we were talking about food sources earlier. Um, buffalo berries, a big one. Choke cherries, rose hips, uh, plum thickets. Uh, this is prime example of some of the stuff they're eating right here. Right here, great food source, especially early season. So actually, let's do this right here. Cool way to look for, see what they're eating. So if you got their head right here, got their breast, it starts right here. There's a little pocket and you can feel, oh yeah, I can feel the choke cherries. And, yeah, so, and it is just super interesting. So, I mean, grasshoppers or, we got some grasshoppers in here. Get this feather out of the way. Grasshoppers, but then look at that. Look at all those choke cherries. If you're in this situation, what I would do is we found them here. So, okay, here's a patch here, there's a patch there. And what I can do is I can look on the hunt app here. So I'll go and pull it up and say, all right, from where I'm standing, there's choke cherries here. What you do is you're standing right next to the bush so you can see what it looks like, right? So this is what it looks like on the map. I'm gonna zoom out and say, okay, here's a patch here. Here's another patch here. And what you can do is then just hopscotch to those spots. So whether it's buffalo berries, whether it's choke cherries, whether it's little plum thickets, easy way to get on more birds. After that, all of us and the dogs were pretty worn from the past few days of hunting. So we hiked back to the truck, drove back to camp, gave the dogs some much needed rest, and then let Simon show us his famous sharp tail pizza that we had been hearing about all week. All in all, it was a pretty great trip on the prairie. There were plenty of birds, lots of good dog work, beautiful country. We got to witness our friend's first bird ever, a young dog's first hunt ever, and we learned a thing or two along the way. <laughs>